Okay, welcome back. Uh, 55 points. So the recovery in the market continues, just down 55, uh, so which means we are up 100, almost 100 points from the day's low, 18,442. Some more work to be done for the market to come back to the 20-day moving average. Another 40 points would do it. So we'll see. Uh, so far, so good. Now, the BHEL stock price has seen a 40% up move this year. Remember, the company saw a weak second quarter, missing estimates on all fronts, but now they're witnessing uh, business revival and diversification into industrial segment offerings like railways, defense, nuclear uh, areas as well. And uh, this bodes well. To discuss all of this, we are now joined by Dr. Nalan Singhal, uh, CMD at uh, BHEL. Uh, Dr. Singhal, thanks very much for your time. Great to have you with us here. Prashant, this side. Uh, I just want to start with a quick margin question, uh, Dr. Singhal. Gross margins were down 350 basis points in Q2 year on year. That was largely kind of uh, blamed on account of execution of legacy orders, older orders. Uh, could you tell us uh, how this uh, will change as we go over the next couple of quarters? Uh, because uh, the common assumption is, you know, as newer and newer work starts to come in, margins will look better and better. But could you uh, map the journey for us from here? So gross margins were, we are looking at legacy orders as well as a huge uh, increase in the material cost, you know, steel prices, copper prices, cement prices, which have all gone through the roof. Uh, and uh, yes, so, uh, so what is uh, really happening is that uh, we have these older orders, which are very competitive, which have, there are delays, there are material cost increases. But as we start getting our new orders kicking in, we are, our orders are typically long lead, long cycle time orders. So as the new ones start kicking in in various areas, those uh, that issue should gradually, you know, we should be able to take control on that issue. All right. Uh, so, okay. All right. Uh, noted that, uh, Dr. Singhal. So let's uh, push that point forward then. Gross margins that come down substantially. A few years ago, your gross margins were more than 40%. So do you believe that the worst of gross margins are behind you all? And if you could give us a rough number, what kind of a gross margin band are you looking at? say, for the second half of the year and from year on? You have ambitious targets for the next five years, so I ask you this. So, uh, you see, uh, I wouldn't... I would, you see, uh, uh, as I said, these, these the older orders, you, so, so for the next year or so also, we will still continue to, uh, to be faced with this issue. The orders which are now coming in, uh, so, so typically in the second and third year, they start kicking in. So that uh, uh, you know that that is when the 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 margins should then uh, come start coming back. Uh, of course, uh, you know we are now in a much more competitive uh, sort of market than we have ever been. So this uh, we we may, may be, we we may never get back the the old sort of gross margins, but yes, we will certainly get substantial gross margins. Okay, substantial gross margins. Uh, Dr. Singhal, uh, good morning and thanks for joining in. You know, another opportunity that the street is also very bullish on and you've been talking about is the coal gasification. You've developed technology for gasifier of high ash Indian coal and you have said in, you know, to analysts in the recent past that the opportunity will see significant traction in the next few years. Considering that India has a target to set up 100 million tons of coal gasification by FY30, how much do you think BHEL could benefit from this? Can you give us some numbers? What is the uh, opportunity for you? What could the growth look like? Okay, so you see, uh, coal gasification, as I said earlier, also is is a very major uh, major area of going forward for BHEL as well as for the country. And you are, you already mentioned the sort of targets that are being looked at. Uh, the, put it in this perspective that uh, we have. Uh, the only so far proven uh, technology for high ash coals. You know, uh, typically what you're looking at, if you look at international technologies which are available today, they are for low ash coals. And Indian coals, um, 75 to 80% are high ash coals. So our technology has been uh, developed for that and has been uh, gasification technology and has been tested in that, uh, uh, for, for that, that sort of coals. So uh, that gives us a very good advantage there. We have already uh, signed an MOU with Coal India for our ammonium nitrate plant, uh, another one for, for with Neville Lignite uh, for uh, coal gasification and IGCC. 
so uh, we expect that to and we are we are uh, you know we have a dedicated team working in mission mode so our our commercialization the, the technical side is going rapidly and we, are, we, we as soon as we are able to sign our joint ventures we will start moving on the on the construction as well so I think going forward that we are, we are very bullish on, on that is a very major area for us. So just to get some numbers, if you can, I was reading a report which suggested that there are coal gasification orders worth 8,000 crores from Coal India that could be finalized. Is that a reasonable assumption? And from Neveli Lignite as well, what is the expectation? So... Uh... I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really get into figures right now. But yes, the, the sort of magnitude you're talking about is is a typical magnitude for a, for 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 one 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 plant, uh, which would be about a one million ton plant. Uh, so, uh, uh, and going forward, uh, you see, ultimately, cost and prices will come down as we go into volumes. But uh, uh, still, it, it's a very big, very big number that we are looking at. Uh, Dr. Singhal, let's uh, focus on a couple of other numbers then. The order inflow for the first half of the year was 15,000 crores, right? And your revenues yes. were around 9,500 crores. What yes. kind of an order inflow are you looking at for the year or for the second half of the year? So one is on order inflow. Second fact I want to know is, what do you end the year with in terms of revenues? Cross margins, as you told us, will struggle for the next few quarters. So revenue and order inflow. Uh, so uh, you see, as far as orders are concerned, you 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 understand that our ordering is largely lumpy on account of the of uh, the you know the big big uh, power, power uh, uh, the, the the thermal power orders which have uh, uh, so we had a eighty seven hundred crore order which came in in the first quarter. There are a couple of odd other orders in the pipeline which we are hoping uh, you know uh, that uh, something will uh, will. Uh, crystallize in the current year mm. so so it, you know what what could happen is something happens in march or it happens in april and that could change the picture to uh, uh, that that 15 days could or one month could change the complete picture mm. so uh, it would be very difficult to okay. actually say what the number would be got it okay yeah. all right dr singhal then it'll be difficult on the order inflow but tell us about the revenue the execution is something that you know markets want to look at very closely so what yes. do you yes. end the year with in terms of uh, of revenues uh, again, you see, for the H1, we have our revenues are up over 20%. Mm. And if you look at physicals, last year we achieved record physicals in terms of uh, the, the the tonnages, the closure of punch. You, you see, there's been a very major focus in the last few years on closure of old projects, completion, and and physical progress on the ground, mm. and that has started showing up. So, mm. which is what what happened last year in terms of the physicals. And which is also what has contributed to this increase in the current year. Mm. And uh, I think that, uh, we, uh, that we should take that as an indicator. Dr. Singhal, uh, uh, you know, just one a quick point. You briefly said, uh, you know, competition, of course, is very high. To the earlier point about margins, and we may never get back to those historically high margins, but we'll do better from here. <laughs> you know, markets get ahead of themselves, they fall over themselves, all over themselves, trying to project things. So, realistically, sir, uh, you know, uh, the ordering in the thermal side is going to be very robust, as I think uh, you've indicated earlier as well. Uh, are, but, you know, BHEL's participation here and uh, w what kind of, uh, w uh, what's your share of this going to be? Because we will see ordering in this space, a steady ordering for the next several years. Uh, in light of competition, as you highlighted, is quite high. Go on. So uh, we do expect a good, uh, you know, the first first one which came in Talche, we, we, have, we have got, we have backed that one. And uh, going forward, we expect to maintain, traditionally we have had a, we have had, you know, a 70 to 80% sort of market share. And uh, going forward, I think we should, we should uh, target to, to retain our market share, market share and market position. Okay. We will you, be quite aggressive in that. Sure. You've put a long-term target as well, right, under your strategic plan, where you're looking at 40,000 crores in revenues by FY27 and double digit operating margins uh, do you stick to that do you, do you think you can do better given the way uh, you know uh, business is picking up so our strategic plan which we have uh, we, which is you know we are we are working towards and that, that is like uh, that sort of target that we are uh, going towards and you know you you mentioned right in the beginning about the railways so that's another very major one coming in the the vande bharat which we have recently bid for mm -hmm. and there are more tenders happening there 
then on the defense side you know we have started uh, the orders for uh, for the the naval guns the, the main guns the srgms and uh, the upgraded srgms so that's another lot which is going to be kicking in so i think yes yes we are we are quite uh, positive okay all right dr singhal you know we're falling a little short on numbers but one number i think you can give us the receivable re receivables for your companies as much as your market cap and that's been the case for the last many years you know I, how confident are you that you'll realize some of this money? And if you're not going to receive it, why don't you just write it off? So let me give you another figure there. You see, uh, uh, receivables against the current year's billing. Now, that figure in the last year was 82%. And that is a substantial jump. It, it, was, it was in very low 70s and late, late and 60s in the, in, the, in the earlier years. So that is an indicator of the sort of you know, effort which is going in. And then if you look at our cash position, you know, uh, the, the cash inflows you've seen over the last couple of years, despite the losses, we have managed to maintain a, a positive cash uh, situation. So I think that is a very good indicator of the effort which is going there uh, to, to, to uh, you know, come in. And, and again, what I said, you know, about completion closures, project closures, that is also a major factor which uh, uh, contributes to our cash flows mm -hmm. the, the, and, and, the receiver, and, and improvement of the receivable position. Okay. That's why those focuses are there. You know that essence, the essence of that focus is that we have to solve, we have to liquidate that receivable, move that move that bit. Okay, all right. Uh, we'll uh, wait by uh, Dr. Singhal. Thanks so much for stopping by, filling us in with a quick uh, insight into how things are shaping up. But we look forward to having a longer chat with you in the coming months and get a better sense of business. It's been good speaking to you. Thank you. Well, time to move on then. Uh, let's talk about the metals as well as the cement space. We have Pinakin Parikh, Executive Director, Metals and Mining, Oil and Gas, Cement.